This tutorial was requested by one of my Instagram friends, Nano Doodles. So here is the tutorial for you. So this project has been on my to-do list forever, but I've been always trying to delay it because it takes a lot of time to make a watercolor mixing chart. Until one day, I saw in a tutorials featuring my favorite watercolor artist, Yuko Nagayama from Japan. In the video. She was actually referencing to a mixing chart that she made. I was deeply impressed by her humbleness because for an artist as famous as she is, she was still using some simple tools like this. And I feel like I have no excuse to delay it anymore. So here are some tools that you need for this project. Any type of watercolor pigment set I'm using Holbein watercolor 30 pigment set, a pencil, a watercolor brush, a ruler, a roll of masking tape, a knife or a pair of scissors, a palette, some water for cleaning the brush, a color wheel if you have one. You can use it as a reference to understand the color of the pigments. You also need a calculator and a compass to help you with the drawing. Now let's get started. First of all, we need to plan how many rows and how many lanes of squares that we need for all the mixing possibilities. Since I have 30 different pigments, this chart needs 30 lanes and 30 rows. I left enough room on the left side because I would like to also make a swatch chart for each single pigment to see how it looks by itself. You see what I'm doing here is to use a compass to get the same amount of spaces in between lines. I find it's easier than using a ruler. Now here is the secret weapon for achieving that clean and crisp edges in between all the squares. I'm using this masking tape of 3 millimeters to cover all the pencil lines on the watercolor paper. I've also mentioned this technique in my other color wheel making tutorial. This would help to prevent the color from spreading into the neighboring squares and also it can prevent the watercolor brush from touching the pencil line so later the color will not be contaminated by the lead. Well, this process seems very long and boring. That's why I kept delaying it in the first place. When I finished this project, I find the result was very satisfying and rewarding. They're not simply just 900 little squares of colors. They're essentially the new tools for you to discover the colors that you have never noticed to develop the color scheme of your next masterpiece. This is the project's meaning to me. Now let's move on to the left side of the watercolor paper. Here we need to finish the prep work for the color swatching chart. Technically you can finish them with the masking tape. For me I just find because these lines are so short it's easier to finish them with a pencil. Now finally we are here to do some color swatches with these beautiful pigments and also make some different color combination mixtures to fill in these squares. You can finish the project in any order you feel comfortable with. You can finish the color swatches first or mixing the colors and filling the squares first. It's all up to you. For me, I find it's easier uh, for my brain just to work with single colors first, then move on to the combinations. But yeah, I tried both. So here's the process you're gonna see in the next few minutes. As for the color mixing part, here's the logic. 
So for each single pigment, we are going to mix it with the rest of the pigments in the set. So for this project specifically, because we have 30 different pigments in the set, for each single pigment, there is going to be 29 outcomes plus itself, so 30 in total for each single pigment. Then the next step is to prepare some color mixtures on the palette and get them ready. On this chart, you are going to locate its two parent colors, one from the lane, the other one from the row, and then imagine two lines running from these two colors where they meet is the cell that the new mixture should go. You will find out later, for each single color mixture, there are actually two cells on this chart where it can go. The traditional way for preparing this chart is to have all the color mixtures being repeated twice in two different cells. A new modified way accepted by many people these days is to run a diagonal line from top left to bottom right. Any color mixture above this diagonal line would be the mixture in its diluted version. Anything below this diagonal line would just be the regular mixture. For this project, I adopted the modified way, as I think the more information that we can get from this chart, the better. For the swatches, the goal is to see a gradient of color intensity of the pigment on paper. You can achieve this by dipping the watercolor brush into water in between strokes without touching the pigment again. Gradually, the pigment on the watercolor brush will be diluted as the swatch goes to the right. And here I finished all the color swatches. I used the label printing machine and printed out all the names of these colors and stick these names onto the color mixing chart. Then I just continue mixing different colors and filling the cells with these mixtures. So this project can expand several days as we have 900 cells to fill in. So just be patient with yourself. Finally, I had all the cells filled in with different color mixtures. This project literally took me several days to finish from the beginning to the end, and now we are finally here. The last step is to use a pair of tweezers to carefully remove all the masking tapes. If you like what you have seen so far, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. I aim to have 1000 subscribers by the end of March. If you would like to share my video, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Now I have this color mixing chart displayed on a board together with the color wheel that I made several days ago. So I can use them as references when painting in my home studio. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.